now we present to you America's quintessential iconoclastic anomaly. Wow. In talk radio, your host, Joe Cristiano. Folks, it's time for us to take back control of our government now before this bureaucratic, oversized, and self-serving federal government starves us of our property, our freedom, our rights, and our liberty. But to do this, we must shed conventional thinking regarding our political structure. We need to be revolutionaries in thought. This is its action. Only after we recognize what our government is doing to our freedom and our Constitution will we start taking it back. And this program is just about that. And welcome to the hollowed halls of the University of Logic, better known as Christiano's Conservatory, correcting convoluted conversation. This is Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano, on 1170 KFAQ. And this is your antidote to popular talk radio. Welcome, everyone. Well, and let me, before we just, how was your week, Joe? What did you do this week? I had an absolutely horrible week. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> really? Absolutely a horrible depressing. week? I'll, I'll, I want to tell you, you how depressing it oh, was. Oh, no. But first, I'd like to introduce the people in the audience, oh, okay? okay. We in have our studio a gang audience here, here today. Yeah, we yeah. do. We have with us, uh, we have a visiting uh, guest revisiting, uh, Ted King. He was here once before. He's the author of The War on Smokers and the Rise of the Nanny State. Ted, thank you so much for showing up this tonight, uh, this evening, I guess. It's my pleasure, Joe. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, of course, my statistician, Tim, is here. <laughs> you statistician. Good statistician. Good here, Joe. Did you get a promotion, Tim? Did he pay you more money? Yeah, he gave me an extra quarter. Oh, wow. Joe! <laughs> no, no, I, I own the quarter. I didn't pay it yet. I didn't, I didn't pay it yet. Of course, my research committee man is right here, Gary. And, and of course, my... My zombie agent is zombie also agent, yeah, zombie yes. area. Yeah. He, he does. He resembles a zombie yeah. sometimes. Hi, how you doing? We're, we're saying hello to everybody on your video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and we have this lovely young girl. And who's who the young girl? Yeah. I'm, I'm Tim's daughter, Camille. Camille, what Camille. a beautiful name! All right, well, thank you for beautiful being name. here. Yeah, yeah, beautiful boy, you girl, got a studio beautiful full name. Here. This is terrific. Man. Yeah, and my wife is next door. Yeah, she's hi. she's many there, other, there she is. Doing? She's waving at us. Very good. She's such um, a patient. I know you can see this on the radio, like folks. You have a clear <laughs> bell of like, <laughs> what's going on? You know, it's like, what's the matter with this guy? Kid? <laughs> this is not television. What's the matter with him? That's my question. How you rope Joe Cristiano? No, but but I did. You had a bad week. I did. I did the most painful thing you could ever imagine. Okay, let me yeah. guess here. And, and, well, uh, other than having trying to have a, a intelligent conversation with my agent, uh, oh. other than that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, really, what I what oh, I finally man. did, you know, I've been broadcasting for about 10 years or so, yeah. and I finally decided because I, I get bugged on this, is they say, Joe, you should watch your program. I, say, I don't watch my program. And like most people, you don't watch your own stuff. You don't listen to yourself. I'll bet when you hear yourself on tape, oh, yeah. right, Jim? Yeah. You, you just want to walk away yeah, and, and yeah. run away, right? Yeah, I don't listen to myself. And have you ever noticed when they have uh, movie stars, for example, on hit, fi hit films? Yeah, they don't watch them. Yeah, and they say, well, tell me, you know, how, uh, Tom how you Cruise, you, you know, yeah. you know how, how did you like that? He goes, I, I, I didn't watch the movie. I never saw the movie. <laughs> and they're always astounded, but I can understand that because I never – well, I decided that I I would do the painful – and and actually watch myself and listen to myself for an entire program. You did. I did. I did. What that for an the first accomplishment! Time. Yeah, it really was. And you know, it you get used to it. You're, you're so critical of yourself. You're more critical than right. anyone else. You know, but in, in effect. I, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not patting myself on. I had fun watching it. Well, good. Oh, you it was it as painful watching, for you, know? you as it is for us? What's that? Oh, I, it wasn't oh, as painful Tim. for you as it is for us. There goes that quarter <laughs> race. You, you see yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you, yeah, see, yeah. you want to know why I hate everyone that works with me. Well, yeah, I wonder yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. We're here to support I mean, we, we've you, We've been Joe. fired. We, How many times have you fired us? But I do have an announcement to make. Okay, what's that? My agent... Won an award this week. He did. What award was it? What'd you win, Gary? What'd you yeah. win, Gary? Yeah, he was he was uh, nominated and he won. By the way. Oh, okay. You know, he's now Exciting. considered the Grand High Exotic Mystic Zombie Ruler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm see. the Grand now, I'm the Grand Poobah yeah, Exotic yeah, right. Ruler. Yeah, and he did, and we we congratulate him for that. I see the crowds are responding to that. Yes. And there is no no lack of people that 
I can lead because there's a lot of zombies out there. <laughs> we're going to talk about that, by the way. Oh, we are? Folks, okay. don't wait. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to, I'm going to make some sort of an analogy. That I'm, I'm going to do that, you know. That'd be and, good. But yeah. we have, we need some music. Do we have some music? Well, yes, sure. Just play yeah. me some music. All right, coming up for you. Yeah. Here you go. Play me Ready? track five. Okay, I don't care which track one five. Here you yeah. go. Track five. Here we go. Let's see. Bill. Here we go, folks. Don't go away. Okay, music. Here it is. Does anything work? Yeah. <laughs> I just gotta find some music. Here we go, and here it is. Okay, no. folks, this is the stomach turner of the week. Oh, All right, we have the stomach turner of the week. Oh, isn't that, now, <laughs> isn't that nice music? Yes, this, I think that's it. That music is inappropriate, but it's the stomach turn. Stomach no, turner I like of the week. It. It's it's sur- you know sarcastic that way. Yeah, you know here, you know we we have to be absolutely. Out of our gourds. Uh, here he is, Joe Biden's son, and everyone knows this. It's been on TV a thousand times, right, and on radio. Joe Biden's son, Hunter, right, is uh, been awarded the job of um, uh, on the board of directors of the Ukrainian gas company. Most successful. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, you know, I'm surprised they didn't call one of you guys, you know, that uh, or me. You know, they just should have called, you know, I. Joe, you want to be on the board of directors of the Ukrainian gas company? I just I, I would have thought they would have called me first. And and now this is what the office says. It says Hunter is a private citizen and a lawyer, according to Kendra Barkoff, a representative for the vice president's office, she told the Wall Street Journal. And then she quotes, she says, the vice president does not endorse any particular company and has no involvement with this company. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I am just wow, not smart. He good, I know man. I'm not I'm that telling. smart, but how dumb could you be to, to even? That. I mean, how dumb could they be to say something stupid like that? You know, he just happens to be walking around. You know, answers the phone and says, "Oh yeah, okay, I'll be on the board of directors of the biggest gas company in the East." Oh, yeah, no problem. And, and besides, like our yeah. government is highly involved up to their elbows in uh, oh, yeah. a war over there. Yeah, I'll have I'll have our troops get, we'll pave yeah. the way for yeah. me. Yeah. We'll give him security. You know, you know, and and yet, and and and, and the media gives them a pass. No, no one's problem. Question. Oh no, no you, Joe, you misinterpret. You're, you're just negative. I'm just a negative guy. That's you are all. negative. You know, yeah. that's just terrible. Well, all right, enough of that. Enough of the stomach turner of the week. I want to talk a little bit about the campaign uh, debate that Pat Campbell held oh, here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Come Friday. Yeah. And I want to say that Pat, I applaud you. You did it, did a, a, an admirable job. You know, he did a very, very good job. He had it laid out perfectly. I mean, he had three guys there, right? And then here they are. And he had a specific time schedule. And let me tell you something. He kept them in line. I mean, he did a good job. He asked the questions. He gave them so much time. And there was no pussyfooting like you see so many times where a guy says, you have 30 seconds to answer and they take two and a half minutes. He kept them in line. In fact, at one time, I think it was T.W. Shannon, I think, uh, was was asked a question, and what he did, instead of responding what he would do, he responded what one of his opponents had done or something like that. And Campbell, he shut him off immediately. He said, I didn't ask you that question. I want to know what you good did. Good for him. And I, yeah, I, I, him. I applaud him. I, yeah, he did. Good job, yeah, Matt. He did a great job, uh, and he kept it right through the whole thing. And... Um, Oh, was it Brogdon? I'm sorry. It was Brogdon, he said. My, I just got corrected by my other staff member here. <laughs> I got too many staff members here. <laughs> anyway, I should have mentioned anyone's name because I didn't remember, and I, I apologize to Shannon for that. But he really kept it online. He asked pertinent questions all the way down the line, and he kept it, He kept the thing rolling. And it was everyone knew who was in charge, and that was – that was impressive, and I, I applaud him for that. Um, now, the, the, after they get elected, that's another story. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. now my criticism is not of Pat Campbell or anything like that. It's generally of the the process, the process of interviewing candidates. Yes, this is my problem, and and I'll tell you what they are. We had the three runner, the three. Um, uh, main candidates, front the front. That's right. Thank you. The front runners, they call them. And and this is where I think we missed the boat. Only f- a little over fifty percent of the people 
I think like 33% are Democrats and like 28% are Republicans or something like that. There's the figures are close to that, depending on who you ask. And uh, so you have a little over 50% of the people who are registered Republicans or Democrats. You have a good 35 to 40% of the people don't vote at all, and they want affiliation with no one. In other words, you have people walking out of the system. The people hate the system. They don't believe in it. They don't believe that their vote counts, right? And my criticism is that if we're going to have a debate, don't invite the front runners. Invite those people who are trying to break into government to truly change it. So I think what we did is we invited the wrong people. <laughs> really, think about it. Yeah. I mean, wh- wh- if, if, if you are a non-voter, would you be listening to, to people who are in office trying to get a higher office? W- would that be of interest to you? No. Now, if you're a diehard Republican or a diehard Democrat and you had your progressive or your neocon or whatever, oh, yeah, you'd listen to every word. But what is that population? The population is the older population we they are dying off, right? The people coming up are saying, I don't buy this game anymore, and we are not catering to them. We're catering to the old fossils, you know, who vote, but those people who don't vote, we're ignoring, and we're ignoring. And the more we ignore them, the more they say we want no part of the process. So I think we have a very, very – now, this is not Pat, Cam, Pat Campbell's fault. Or no. like that, now but you, we have you, a real problem. You were, you were listening to it live uh, the other yeah, morning, absolutely, 78. Yeah. Right. Okay, I, I hadn't listened to it, and I the reason I hadn't listened to it is because I figured these three guys – would probably say mostly the same thing about the same question. Am I wrong? Oh, no, you're absolutely right. And it was very difficult. I have to admit that I sort of left to go into the kitchen for a while <laughs> <laughs> toward the end because it really didn't interest so me. So was there a game changer of the three in your situation? From No, a- absolutely not. Do, don't you think we need a game changer? Uh, absolutely. Oh, do we have any more time? Is it break time now? Yeah, just about break time. Okay, yeah. why don't we take a break? We'll be right back. Oh. 70. You know, ju- during the debate, I, you know, y- you would think under the times that we have now, we have a dystopian, you know, uh, America. In other words, it's, a, it's, it's an imaginary. Everything we imagine <laughs> America to be, it is not. It's not. It's, it's gone. America is gone. And, 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 and spare me the, you know, USA. Spare me all that crap, okay? And what we do is we should be so angry. We would be she so emotionally angry. It, it should show in our voice. We shouldn't say things like, well, I've um, I've enacted some uh, a revision to the legislation, and this will be brought to the House. No, it's too late for that. And when they say that they uh, are submitting some legislation, what they're saying, they write something down, right? It's got to get massaged by several people. Then it goes to a subcommittee for consideration. Now, if you're in bad stead with the subcommittee chairman, I don't care – what? I don't care what the legislation, it dies. So you have to cater to that person. It's, all of a sudden, all the politics come in. By the time it comes, if it ever passes, and rarely does, unless you really have something on the guy, right? By the time it gets to where it's supposed to go, even to get to a vote, right? You have sold yourself to the devil. Now, why doesn't someone say that? <laughs> yeah. That's the process. Yeah, that's the process. We know that. We know that's the process. But to say, oh, yes, and I have a, to revise this. Revise? We should have Eliminate everything, you know. We should. When I say eliminate everything, they should have said, you know, we, the words that you didn't hear. Here are words that you didn't hear. At least I didn't hear. I didn't hear words like corruption. I didn't hear words like lies. I didn't hear words like deceit, criminal behavior, inside trading, market manipulation, illegal wars, unconstitutional behavior, faltering economy. Um, uh, auditing uh, the it, Fed? You didn't hear that. No, no auditing the Fed, um, uh, illegally detention, um, need for revolution, misspeak, campaign contributions, corporate influence, killing without a trial, the Patriot Act, the NSA, the Department of Education, etc. 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 Wasteful military spending, um, multiple bases in Germany, twenty-five or fifty bases in Germany for no reason whatsoever. You heard absolutely nothing. No one said anything that was sort of negative because well, then you don't have a right, good, good attitude. Why, why would you want to make the public uncomfortable? That's right. <laughs> let's 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 keep because see let's we are the, let's keep the uh, facade going. Let's I, just keep this. 
so-called dream that died before the uh, Federal Reserve uh, over 100 years ago, where we had in America everybody was proud working together to get something done, which we all have this pride that we are Americans. It's 100 years old. We've lost all that pride. We lost 100? Yeah, yeah. Now, we have – the Matrix is no longer a movie. We're in it. It is we're no longer it. Yeah, we're in it. And this proves it because people walk around as if they live in this world, in the matrix, right? They live in this world, and they're happy with it. Don't rock the boat because then you spoil my world. Folks, we are in the matrix. And anyone anyone who speaks against the matrix, right, that speaks against that system, they wind up you're a racist. In, in a FEMA camp, right? Yeah, you're a racist. Yeah, they're afraid of being taken away. Right. Well, you know, Joe, they have camps within camps in the, the United States. It's not uh, – this is not a conspiracy theory. There's been reports done on it yeah. that we are training our American soldiers today to feel comfortable about uh, invading a, an American city. They have – uh, you know, just like they mock up, you know, like uh, a city, you know, when they go to war to another country, they'll mock up. Uh, Preparatory uh, exercises. Doing yeah, they'll exercises, do exercises, yeah. and it'll look like there's a mosque there, and there's, you know, this type of housing that you find in a third world, and, and they go through there, and they bust through the doors. Controlling civil disobedience. That's, that's right. You know, they have those, and they look like America. They have signs. They're American stop signs. they got uh, ATMs, and they got banks, and they got little churches with steeples, and they're doing exercises in this. They're at camps around the country that it, it, it's new it's 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 not a conspiracy theory we're actually training our soldiers right. to feel comfortable exactly. about doing that now yeah. is that or something yeah. wrong there what was really surprising is no one was angry if i was one of the candidates i would be angry as all hell i would be mad as hell and i'm not going to take it anymore you know like network yeah that's what i would be but these guys oh, then were you're calm, a reactionist cool, you're and crazy yeah and oh uh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and america this and america that and this sounded like 1950 i said haven't these guys woken up yet they're still and taking yet, that blue pill. those people those people who feel that way i'll bet are the cat the other four now they said there's three candidates there oh were, there is three more i found four more four more now i think there may be there's an eric mccray there's a dr kevin crow there's a uh, jason wager a wager and a evelyn l rogers that are running for office i want to have those four on the program, I want to see what they have to say and compare it to these weenies, you know, <laughs> who, by the way, I'm calling these guys weenies, and I invited them to be on my program. And but they're they not getting on? a pass from me. They're not getting a pass, huh? They're not getting no. a pass. Now, if they don't want to be on the program, that's fine. Yeah, I've been told. But no told more yeah, soft Joe, when no I called, I contacted him, I said, listen, you're not going to get softball here. Go to his website. Listen to what he has to say. You're going to be asked about things like, uh, soldiers in foreign uh, illegal wars. You're going to be asked questions like uh, uh, the Federal Reserve. You're going to be asked questions like the economy and why are we in the doldrums that we are. I said, we're going to get a pass here. We're going to hammer you on these things. You know what? I don't think they're people. I think it goes out one ear and out the other. They probably don't even go to the website. Oh, boy, we got an interview. And they come on. I'm serious. I think that's what's going on. Uh, we got what? Uh, Randy Brogdon, his guy, agreed. He's coming uh, next week. Next week. Oh, is he? Okay. And, yeah. and, you know, I hope no, he's a game he did, changer. I think he did about, the, about the, my wife. I asked my wife to. to she, she took notes and everything like that. I and hope I he said, goes, She yeah. said, "I said, who who did the best in your opinion?" She said, "Randy, I think one." Well, then we got him next I week. That's her opinion. Oh. Now, Ted, you want to say a few words? Hey, you wrote this. an article, Ted, about this yeah. whole uh, these yes. three top runners. Tell yes. us a little bit about it. Well, uh, I. I write for the Oklahoma Constitution, have been writing for them uh, for 14 years now. I only write about federal stuff because I used to work in the Washington, D.C. area. We are the only conservative quarterly uh, in the state – well, the only con conservative opinion publication in the state. Uh, years ago, we wanted to start another publication to answer basically the Oklahoma Observer and a nasty little man named Frosty Troy – and we came up with this paper. I joined them in 2000. It's been around since 1979. In my article, I look at, size up the various candidates. Um, and a kind of a summation would be TW is fine, but Brogdon is best. I mean, Brogdon is going to be the person to Are we to being carry unfair the... here? I mean, we're, we're really ranting. Are we being unfair? You went into these guys. Uh, well... Come on, be honest. We'll, we'll listen to it, even though we don't agree with you. Um, T.W. <laughs> Shannon talks about fighting the Republican establishment, and I have to laugh. I mean, it's funny. He, he worked for J.C. Watts. He's, 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 been, he's known uh, Tom Cole, Congressman Tom Cole, who is 
who is like, uh, I mean, kind of the godfather behind John Boehner. I mean, you talk about the establishment. Uh, so he's established he, he was Speaker of the House, you know, State Speaker of the House, Oklahoma Speaker yeah, of the House, T.W. Shannon. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not like some guy that's sort of a, a maverick. Uh, he's fairly conservative. Uh, and, and I, you know, I think he'd probably, you know. He's got a, a good looking family, I'll tell a, you that. He's a beautiful family. Like said, we have a cola. Okay. Uh, but Brogdon is the, basically going to be the one who will cru- be the crusader for the things we really believe in. And, and Langford shouldn't even, be, shouldn't even be considered, and I'll go into that later. Okay. okay. All right. Well, Thank well, you hey, very much. We have, a, we have a call. Uh, Jason from Owasso, are you on the air? I am, yes. Jason, thank you hey. for calling Liberty Talk Radio. What say you, as they say? Well, one of the things that you guys addressed was um, nobody voting. And I and I think one of the, the big points is that a lot of people don't vote, and it's not because they don't care. It's because they do care, and they just don't see a difference being made. And I know, for example, this last presidential election, my thought was, okay, let's see, I vote for Obama, and, you know, that's basically a vote to destroy my country. Or I vote for Romney, who's going to also destroy the country, but do it in a little bit, maybe slower manner. And then, you know, I think about well, what happened with Bush. You had maybe what you would say it's me, the lesser of two evils between him and Al Gore. And then because people were so fed up with him and his, his values that were against liberty, that you gave us Barack Obama because they wanted to go in a complete opposite direction of Bush. So if you elect a Romney, then... You get the same things as you got with Bush. Maybe you get, you know, another Barack Obama to retaliate against. You know, hey, you're, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> you you, s- you see, Jason, the, the problem that we have is is not it, it's it, it's it's not that you may not agree or disagree or is that people are not being given a choice. Just like this, you get the top right. runner. Well, yeah, you get ju- the top just runner. like the, this debate, we saw the top runners. Now, if someone comes in and is highly qualified and going to square away this country, you will never see or hear from that person. The system will oh, make yeah. sure this person does not win. And then when you don't show Ron up Paul. to vote, you are told, Ron, yeah, Ron, Paul. Paul, Ron Paul, you are told, you know, it's your obligation to vote. No, it's your obligation to dissent. And what we have is we have a majority of people now, almost a majority of people, dissenting. And that's exactly what should happen until the system changes, where we have the Republican, the Democrat, or someone else, and then none of the above. I would vote every time if there was none of the above, because that's who I would be voting for. You know? And what what would happen, I'm changing though? my name. What would happen in a presidential election if there was none of the above – would we see a particip- participation rate of 57% or whatever it is? No. I'll bet you it would be 85 to 90%, and neither one of those car- clowns would get in because people would say, I'm voting. I really don't like either one of them. I, I want to make a point. With the American Revolution, a third of the population was for the patriot side, as we know right. it. A third, of the par- a third of the population was for the Tories, for the Crown, and a third of the population wanted to know it was for lunch. Right. It's always been that way. Yeah, they wanted to know what the price of tobacco was down at That's the general right. store this yeah. week. And rum. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. rum. Yeah. But, you know, today everyone's bombarded every day on television with all this political stuff. So it, it is a different time in that people feel as if they are engaged when they are really not. You mean television. Yeah, television. <laughs> television right. Hey, Jason, thank you very much for calling. we got to go to break now. So thank you very much for calling good, us. Good, good, good comment. Good, good comment. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. Do we have a break now? You got about one minute. Oh, wow. one, one minute. minute. What am yeah. I going to do for? I'll, I'll sing a song. Yeah, I good. think. Another <laughs> open, no. another show. Yeah. But we really have a problem in that we. Do, it's it's the system, and no one wants to fight the system. First of all, you can't unless it's revolutionary. And once a candidate mentions the word revolutionary, they say, "Oh, he's kind of crazy, nutty." But that's what we need because right now we don't have America. We have to revolutionize what is going on. We need. You know, a revolution doesn't matrix. mean you pick we, up a, a right. gun and fight. People think you use that word, it's going to be a, a, right. a, a bloodbath. We're trying to keep one from happening. Absolutely. Exactly. All right, now, now we can go to break. All right, stay with us. Thanks for hanging in with us, folks. We have Col- Colin on the line from Tulsa. Colin, you're on the air. Thank you for calling Liberty Talk Radio on 1170 KFAQ. Joe, I am a big fan. I've listened to you for a long time. And I tell you, sir, if I hear one more 
stupid thing off the lift, my eyes are going to bleed. Uh, <laughs> really. You know, I, you know, and, you know, and here's the thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people. I'm an independent. I, I've been independent for years, but the, I've, I've seen what is going to happen is, you know, and this is a sad thing. There are a lot of us out there that don't like the right because they're, they're also a bunch of grand character eating idiots. And we're waiting for somebody to go and, you know, go for the right thing. You know, as an independent, I got to tell you, it's never going to happen. You know, you, if you find a, a really good guy that stands for, you know, liberty and, and democracy and, you know, you know what? It's going to split the vote. So we're going to have to, like, swallow the poison pill and go for the, the best and, and the brightest of the right, you know, which I know uh, it hurts me, too. But I think that's the, our only chance. And, you know, there's a few guys out there, like Brodman is one. Uh, Bridenstine is, is a shining star. I'm waiting for someone to start attacking him. But, you know, eventually it's going to come down to, you know, you either want to be a, a victim or a victor. And I think eventually it's going to come down to where maybe we can pick one that we can stand on the right if they will, honest to God, actually go there and, and take care of some of this. Just, a, just one thing at a time. Old yeah. business. It's all old business. You know, we, oh, yeah. it, 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 we've we never dealt with things that we should have dealt with, and we, we're, we're off running enough to get into a war with somebody, or we're trying to shove, a, a, you know, a medical plan that's down people's throats. We're not really taking care of business like the Federal Reserve. Exactly. You know, that's the thing we need. We need to go to core issues. Well, if, if we could just get one guy that will actually stand up there and, you know, actually go ahead and say, you know what, I, you know, and, and we had I'm, one guy, we had Ron Paul, but he, one guy can't do it. We need about well, no, we, we, the, the guy before him was Jack Kennedy. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. You no, know, very few people. No, I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. Very few people knew know this, but if you read history, they had too you'll much find, on him, though. You'll find that. <laughs> That what he did is he circumvented the CIA, went around their back, negotiated with Khrushchev on his terms to yes, resolve sir. the issue uh, yes, over sir. Cuba, pigs, yeah. right? And when he yes, did sir. that, he did that, the ball game was over. Okay? I say no more than that. The ball game ended there. You see, so it's it's it can be very very dangerous, <laughs> you know, when you do stuff like that. Yeah, we need about yeah. fifty of them. Red. Yeah, and, and, and they, they they emulated him. I mean, they made an example out of him. It was yeah. terrible. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? I I really think though that there are enough people that are pissed off enough in this country that they they're really gonna finally say, you know what? I don't care what it costs me. You know, eventually. But, you know, I, I heard uh, about, like, there was this guy that was going to lead a march on, on the mall and have, like, you know, a million militia members going down there to go. And, you know, right. we're going to we're gonna call for the outing of all these bums, get them out. And I'm like, yeah, that's going to work. Yeah. It was a good thought, though, you know. It was a good thought. <laughs> well, you know, would it, would it be nice if 10 million people, 10 million people showed up and marched down the street? In Washington, exactly. well, you know, you know, million, I would want to. I'll, I'll be there. You know, I got to thinking about that, Joe, and 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 this whole thing. Why can't we get ten thousand people at fifty different states to march on each state house? If you all you need to get is fifty thousand at each state house times fifty. What's that? Two hundred fifty thousand. That's that's good. That's good math, sir. Okay, yes, sir. So there you go. It would only take that much, I right. think, to speak out. We need to get smaller groups at the state level speaking out. And, I mean, come in droves. It's hard for people to go all the way to Washington, and they're not the answer anyway. If we go there, we're telling everybody that they are the ones who should have the power. They shouldn't have the power. The people should have the right. power. We have the power. We have right. the power. power so the we need to go right. to the oh. state houses and, and organize having a large group that can take a day off, because we have to work, you know, take a day off and go over to uh, Oklahoma City, and everybody in every state in the union could probably do that. Right. State well, teachers do I, it. I, state I, I teachers think, do it. There you go. Hey, yeah, and they want to raise. I think Mark Levin had a good point when he said that you know, it, uh, according to Article Five, there is a way you could do that where all the states could have a constitutional convention and you know, literally get rid uh, of all this junk. Yeah, yeah. Basically, vote no confidence on the government and get them out. And, Boy, but, that'd be know, cool. 
Yeah. yeah, no kidding. But, you know, the whole thing is you've got to get people off their damn cell phones <laughs> and get them <laughs> to do something. So, but you know what? Uh, like I said, Joe, you, you are a voice. I love you, man. Just keep it up. Hey, thank you so much, boy. I need those words once in a while. I get beat up around here. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Internally and externally. Colin, thank you very much for calling Colin, in. Appreciate you. it. Appreciate You're you very welcome, much. Sir. Right. Have bye a good bye. day. Thank you. Bye bye. You know, I, I received a cartoon and it said um, there's a there's a creature from out of space coming out of a spaceship and he says, People of Earth, we have captured all of your most powerful politicians. Do exactly what we say, or we shall release them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, really, but uh, there's, there's truth in that. You know, you know. Here's one other thing I want to say before we change the subject: is, is, um, uh, what needs to be said by our politicians, and they would never say this because I think they'd wind up in a in a, in a trash container, right? Is that when they talk about our monetary system and our economy, they should say, folks, you should understand that the Bank of America is controlled by the Rothschilds. Citibank is controlled by the Rockefellers. Chase is re, re, uh, uh, controlled by the Morgans. And collectively, they make up the Federal Reserve. I mean, why don't, why don't we say things? This is a fact. Why don't we say things like that? Instead of saying, well, you know, Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen is nobody. I mean, she, I think she was a janitor before this. And they just said, hey, <laughs> hey would you mind you know, saying this stuff? She has no idea what she's talking no. about, you know. And, uh, you know, as good old Mr. Rothschild said, Baron Rothschild said, give me control of the nation's currency. And I care not who makes the laws. And, folks, true, that true, brings true. us to our next conversation, uh -huh. and that's about our economy. I get hit with that question about our economy more than anything else. It's going and great. It, it's right. It's oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> what what people – I, I want to read just a few headlines first before I even get in on that. All right? Here we go. Um, come August 14th is the last day of what they call the Silver Fix. Now, the silver fix, what, how that works is the price of silver, which is sort of tied in with the value of the dollar indirectly, very, very indirectly, all right? It's, um, it's, a, a, uh, it's a telephone call that's made every day at noon, all right, between Deutsche Bank, HSBC Holding, and Bank of Nova Scotia. They decide collectively. Now, how, why those banks, I don't know. But they decide collectively what the price of silver would be. It is going to be interesting on August 15th whether or not the price of silver is going to be three cents or $3,000. Yeah. And no one knows. Wow. Be, and, and I think one reason why they're getting rid of what they call the silver fix, and this, they've been doing this now for centuries, I mean for, for decades. For gold too, right? Yeah, for gold too, right. Gold. That's the LIBOR rate, right? Um, now. The, uh, the I think they call it the LIBOR fix. I think that's what they want. Let me let me check. Uh, I, no, I don't want to check. I don't have the time. But anyway, they do the same thing for gold. Is because right now, oh, no, 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 the LIBOR rate has nothing to do with the gold price. Sure. But uh, what happened is that two and a half billion dollars worth of lawsuits were won against the LIBOR rate, and now they're going after silver. And they're afraid that they're going to get hit with billions of dollars worth of fines for fixing the price of silver. Ooh. Now, at that point, will we see some sort of kink in, in, in the value of the dollar? No, no one mm. knows the answer. I wonder what you Lloyd should, thinks. You should be afraid, very afraid. I wonder what Lloyd thinks. Lloyd, give us a call. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, he knows everything. He's our, he's our <laughs> off-site he uh, analyst. Yeah. 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 Now, I, I just yeah. want to mention that. So you should be afraid, as they say, very afraid. Hey, here's something, another thing that's interesting. The Wall Street Journal has some good articles. I don't agree with their, their take on it, but they have good articles. China, Inc., moves the factory's floor to Africa. I love that. The Chinese worker is making too much. They are no longer competitive because they lost them like 10,000 factories to Vietnam and Thailand, right? So now they're moving their factories, China's moving their factories to Africa where they can pay less. And at the same time, we want to pay $15 <laughs> an hour to someone who is making hamburgers, you know, uh, you know, or, or you see what I mean? It's a world economy, folks, and you better be prepared for it. 
right? And there's tremendous downward pressure all over the world. And I want to continue with that line of thinking. Would um, then moving their, uh, I guess, factories to Africa, how would that affect us? I know we do a lot of trade with China. Would that, I mean, would there be no, some sort benefits, of domino effect? No, it benefits effect? us because we'll get the products cheaper. Okay. You see? I, and people are against globalization. I'm against globalization that's been, been manipulated. But if, in fact, I want to have a part for a machine made, I go around the world and I find the best place to buy it is Belgium because they met the best part at that price. I buy it from Belgium. There shouldn't be a restriction that I can't go to Belgium because we should make it here because we may make it not as well here at three times the price. Well, that means I become uncompetitive not only in America but worldwide. Uh, That's the problem. People think globalization is bad. Globalization is only bad when people get involved. Countries get involved and they start manipulating the price. They politicize it. Politicize it, uh, placing tariffs on certain items so they can protect it. Then it gets bad, and that's what causes depressions. So do you believe that this thing with China has been manipulated, that somehow they've been forced to No, no, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. All I'm saying is that uh, we're saying that we need to raise the minimum wage when China – because the peasant pay in China is killing us, and yet the peasant pay in China is becoming – Uncompetitive worldwide, and they are, they have to go to Africa. Well, maybe Think that's why that. our military's in Africa. We're going to make and protect that's, our interests that's over that's there. That's right. Well, oh, I shouldn't think like that, though. No. You know, that, I'm being negative. You're being negative. Yeah, you're you're a negative guy. Ne- negative zombie. Down boy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but the, the the fact is, is that China is all over Africa. In every way, shape, or form, and some, we'll do a program on that someday. It's fascinating what they're doing in Africa. Here's another one. Um, economic activity in the Eurozone grew a weak point, point eight percent rate last quarter. Um, U.S. data showed the mixed economic uh, backdrop faces the Fed. No kidding. All right. U.S. consumer prices rose 0.3 percent. In April and March alone, fastest rate since last June, higher cost on staples. No kidding, folks. All right, I'm going to get one more. All right, Walmart takes another hit on sales. I went to Walmart two weeks ago. I, this, I think I'm repeating myself. And I didn't want to go. It was a Saturday afternoon. Didn't want to go. I said, God, I have to pick this thing up. My wife says, will you pick up the water filters? I kept on forgetting. I said, all right. So it was like Saturday at 1 o'clock. I said, oh, my God, I'll be there for a month You know, by the time I get I walked in, not many people there, walked to the back of the store, purchased, got the water filter, the zero filter, should I get, you know, and there was actually a checker standing in the aisle where the customers walk, waiting for someone to check out. I did, I was in and out no more than four minutes. Isn't that amazing? That I, I used, to never, yeah, that, yeah, used to never is, see that, Joe. You used to never see that. This is the economy. People get things confused. There is, in fact, monetary inflation in society. Monetary inflation means we print money, there's more of it. It's a very simple concept. All you do is print more money. Every other piece of uh, paper, every dollar is less expensive, less valuable. You know, if you were the only, had the only painting in the world of this famous artist and the only one, it would, it would fetch Hundreds of millions of dollars. However, if there was million copies made, you, you may get 25 bucks for it. You know, it's the same thing with our dollar. No difference. The law of economics is all the same. You can't change it no matter how you want to manipulate it. So we have monetary inflation. The problem is, is that people aren't earning the money and you cannot create jobs. People have to create productively. They have to create product, which they're not doing anymore what is because the, we don't have it. Well, what is the uh, estimate now? I mean, not with all the crap the, the government does with the uh, you know unemployment, but what in – and you're reading uh, in the, you know, the trades and in the uh, financial news. What is the real state of employment, you think, in this country? Yeah. Well, yeah. it depends. There, I mean, if you looked at it right. like we did 20 years ago. Right. Well, there there is – the U factor, the U factor. We we use the U three. There's U U one to U six. U three counts certain things, discounts others. The U three is like what six point something percent, which according to the government, according to shadow statistics, it's more like eight or nine percent. 
But you should count the U6 and those are people who are looking for jobs, underemployed. So then you get closer to 15 percent, according to the government. The government closer. So to they'll 15%. admit to 15. Well, uh, maybe 12 now because it yeah, keeps yeah. on going down, right? But if you look at at the at the people who redo those figures, they have it between 20 and 25 percent. Oh my! I think that's accurate. Yeah, uh, I, I really right do. There, yeah. I think that's yeah. accurate. Yeah, because what, the, 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 and here's their logic. They say, well. Uh, a person had a job making fifty dollars an hour. Now the same person has two jobs, you know, making nine dollars an hour each, right, on each job. But that counts as two jobs taken up versus one job. So actually, statistically, things have improved. And yet this guy's starving to death, and he has two jobs. Right? They take into account all of those factors which the government figures do not. But we have a real problem. We do have a problem. Now, the real reason why I have a real problem is you look at car sales. Car sales went up. And the only reason why car sales went up is because they were giving around, you know, zero financing. But with that came a cost. That was no different than the, um, than the housing bubble. The same – we have a car bubble now. People were given <clears throat> cars at zero percent, but then they, they paid, believe it or not, in the price of the car. Yes, people, how much you pay for your car? Oh, I paid that 38000 You know, 38000 that's a lot of money for a car. Yeah, but I got it financed for over seven years, you know. We didn't do this at one time. We bought cars for cash or had a year or two. A year or two on. is what right. it was. Absolutely, yeah. And it was a very small amount. You put a, a substantial amount down. Yeah, you could afford now your insurance then. Now it's zero <laughs> down, yeah. What's happening is now people can't afford the cars. And, in fact, it, things have gotten so bad with the consumer, the consumer's actually credit card debt has actually gone down because they realize they, they can't pay it anymore. They're well beyond paying their credit cards. They're maxed out, and they've actually retrenched slightly on the amount of consumer debt. People don't have the money to spend. Walmart lost a good portion of the good portion, but a portion of his business to the dollar stores. Just think. Now, where sales are really good, you go to a Maserati car dealership. No problem. Lamborghini selling like crazy. That's because we have crony capitalism, and the only people making money are the people at the top who are manipulating the system. They're making a fortune, and they love inflation because they're down. the first ones jumping in, and then we pay the price. And trickle-down economics isn't trickling as it, as it used to. <laughs> That's right, yeah. well, no, there's a yeah. such thing as really that uh, economics that works that trickles down to everybody gets a piece. You know, is is a valid uh, deal. Yeah. But and, the problem is there's nothing trickling down. It's all staying up there. Well, it, 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 and it, it, I hate those terms because know, like Reagan know, was trickled down. People are like, oh, that's so stupid. They hate Republicans. But that's all stupid but, stuff. But the, Look at economics, you know. We, we have 0% interest rates. Right, you go to the bank, you give a bank money, you literally are paying the bank to hold your money because they're giving you 0.7 of 1% and inflation, the true inflation is, is true inflation is closer to 4 to 5%. So you well, let's say even the government inflation numbers is only 2%, you're paying 1.3%. Even if you took the phony uh, the, uh, government numbers, you pay the bank every year 1.3% to hold your money, of which there's no certainty of you getting it back because you're no longer a depositor. Now you're categorized as a creditor of the bank because you're lending the money to the bank. You're not a depositor. You you are a creditor. So when the bank goes so you're bye the bye, one risk. You're so the one that Risk. That's right. Not you're them. taking the risk, and you are paying them. Listen, you are paying the bank to take the risk by giving them your money, and you are paying them. Now, folks, I if think that's my a mind bad is deal. I'm that's about a bad deal. ready to explode. My mind is going to crack open. There's going to be blood all over this place. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be no brains. It, I think that, that, that doesn't make any ago. sense. It really doesn't make, make no, no sense, sense, sense at all. Right. And then Yellen keeps on putting out this $45 billion, which is phony also, because she has to turn over all the debt that's coming through. That's costing $10 billion. She's actually turning over clo- over $50 billion a month. And people are saying, geez, economy's doing much better. Only $50 billion a month. Well, just give me one of those months. I'll be happy with I, it. I have a question. Sure. As, as, um, uh, Glenn Beck says, you know, basically uh, uh, fire and brimstone, Armageddon's coming. Uh, uh, Larry Kudlow, who is on in the morning on the station, very good show, does not say that stuff. Uh What's going to happen? Well, Larry Kudlow has been incredibly wrong. I can I remember listening to Larry Kudlow 
right before the big crash of 2008. And he came on and said, the banks are in great shape. I would put my money into finance, you know, into the financial institutions. And I looked at him like he had lost his mind, and he did. He lost his mind. No, I, Kudlow is an ideologue, you know. Um, Glenn Beck is more right in my opinion. However, we don't know what form this is going to take. We don't know if this is going to be just a slow malaise where people just squeeze and squeeze, or there's going to be an event. And when I say an event, no one knows. It could be any, anything of a millions of things that could happen. I already had my event. I don't need any more. You had an event. I had an event. I don't need any more. Tell, tell it us was about 2008. That. I lost my butt. I don't want another event. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, so we don't know what's going to happen, but we know if you look historically what has happened in the past, and if you look at what is happening and you take into account what is happening, you know where, which road we're going down. And it ain't pretty. Uh, the U.S. dollar is getting weak. It's getting weak against the euro, and the euro is getting weak. Now, for the first time, the euro is going to engage in quantitative easing, and that's something, according to the European Central Bank, was the big no-no. We will never do that. Too late. Now they're overturning that because they are in such – they're fearful. They're fearful of deflation. Now, deflation is actually good for you and me, bad for governments. So they have to keep the, the presses going. Um, Yellen is all concerned about having only 2% inflation. And for some reason, in her economics book, you know, it says anything less than 2% inflation is bad. Bad economy, bad. You know, sit, go to sleep, you know. Wait a minute. That, oh, that makes inflation no sense. That doesn't make sense. No. In fact, deflation, slight deflation is good because this year, whatever money I have, next year I can buy more. It is good for the economy. That puts people to work. It's productivity. Absolutely. And then when you have def you have defla and you also want to entice people to save, you give them five to seven percent on their money. Then people save money. That that saved and money. And they become their own bank. Is, is no, no. If, if you put it to a, even if you put it into a bank. Right, but I mean they become their own financial institution that, that way that's because right. they have an a investment. Ab absolutely. Exactly, yeah. That money is being lent out productively to create. Create products and innovation. And they got security. They're not flipping right. out. They're not going to get Everything any money we're in the doing future. is backwards. And if we conti continue on this route, it is going to crash. It's it is going to crash. It's and I'm, not, uh, doomsday. I'm saying it's going to crash. It could be just a malaise forever. And if it is, it's going to be like 10 years. It's not going to be one or two years, at least 10 years. It, or it's going to be so bad, the depression of nineteen in the 1930s is going to be a cakewalk. I think the government already knows what's going to happen, yeah. Joe. I, I really do. Too. That's I why think, they're I preparing. Think they're yeah, that, I think that's why they're I preparing. I think they're preparing. And I yeah. even heard it on the I, – I, I couldn't find the report. I tried to find it on Channel um, 2 on NBC, the morning show. They had a, a report about zombies and how the U.S. government is uh, getting ready for some type of uh, apocalyptic event. And they actually admitted it on the air. I caught the last bit of it. This was like Monday or Tuesday last week or this last week um, on the national morning news. And then uh, uh, Al Roker stumbled over to his uh, his weather deal and says, <laughs> like, a, like a zombie. Yep. And I thought, if that's in the news on that level, wow, we're in trouble. And they're making fun of it. That's yep. weird. Well, uh, it, it, it ain't pretty. The economy is in horrible shape, and what we need to do is each one of us, every one of my listeners, needs to be their own central bank. You have to forget about the, the, the Fed. You are your own central bank. You need to build your own little imaginary, if you want, balance sheet, right, and plug it in with items of value. And I think this is – our program's over already. Oh, okay? no. Yeah. All righty. Can we have some music or something? We need two hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the end of tonight's broadcast. We'd like to thank our sponsors for their financial support, and we'd like to thank you for listening in. We'd like to thank Ted King for being here with us. It's my um, pleasure. You can further the cause of liberty by recommending this program to your friends and let us hear from you. Our email address is comments at libertytalkradio.com. Remember, you're either allowing your liberties to be taken away or you're striving to protect them. Unfortunately, folks, there is no middle ground. Until next time, this is Joe Cristiano on Liberty Take Talk Radio on 1170 KFA. Thank you. Stay well. Stay tuned.